<laughs> hey guys, welcome to Bianca's Casita, where we talk about motherhood stuff, house cleaning stuff, and most importantly, how the Lord is working in our lives. Today we have my favorite guest of all guests. Your favorite? Yes. And your and her only guest. Hassan and Rosalie <laughs> make appearances. <laughs> guest appearances. Guest appearances, yes. <laughs> Yes. Yes. So we have my husband, Mr. Choco. What's up? <laughs> Today I just wanted to have him on and just have a quick little conversation with him. I'm so happy to be recording again. It's been a while and I missed recording. My tripod had broken, so it was really hard. But now I got a new one. Thank you for my new tripod. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks to Shout out to Amazon. <laughs> I know. Like coming in clutch uh, for all my wife's needs. <laughs> At a click of a finger, done. <laughs> you don't even have to go to the checkout island. You just go buy now. Buy now. It's, it's changed our life dramatically. <laughs> so it's good. So good. So good. So baby, what's so uh, what's the topic of the day? Um, so I've just been in the word and i've just been like very um inspired to talk about how god has been work has worked in our lives and has been working in our lives so in psalms you just kind of see that reoccurring theme of of them talking about what god has done so people wouldn't forget you know and i feel like that's something that has happened to me a lot is like forgetting what God has done for me in times of waiting or in times of turmoil. And that caused me once to like totally stop pursuing the Lord. Do you remember that? There was a, a few months when I was pregnant with Asiel. I was in so much pain, oh, you guys. Yes. And I just like was so upset at God. I was so upset and I just like turned away from him. I was so mad. I couldn't believe that. I was like coming to him with all of everything. I, I was coming to him and I just felt like he shut me out and didn't didn't come through. You were in a season of silence. Yeah. For sure. He didn't come through for me when I felt like I felt he didn't come through. You felt Yeah. But there was stuff going on in the background and you didn't Totally. Know. Like there was so much that he was doing in my life at that well, time. Well not speaking so vaguely, what well, you were having a lot of pain. Mm hmm you were very uncomfortable mm -hmm. and you were i felt super alone you felt alone because mm -hmm. of being silent with god mm -hmm. but also me being working a lot mm -hmm. and, and then my mom wasn't around so it was just a moved. lot of things yeah like i felt like i needed somebody and i was so alone but now looking back at it mm -hmm. Your relationship with God is now the strongest it's ever been, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, was, were you, if you look back, were you doing the right things to be able to hear from God? Mm -hmm. Were you plugged in in a way that He would have spoken to you? Mm -hmm. Or do you feel like, it was with super, what you know now, mm -hmm. would you have heard from Him then? I think I was just like super self-serving then, like I didn't know enough and I was just doing things because I was supposed to do it, it wasn't like, you know, like God knows our hearts and I was going through a lot mentally and I feel like I didn't come to the Lord with my open heart, mm -hmm. I was just like trying to work things out on my own and he was like, okay God, but help me now, kind of thing, like yeah. a second mm -hmm. thought instead of like coming yeah. to him with everything, like very humbly. I mean, just as an outsider, it just feels like even between two people, delivery is everything. Mm -hmm. The way you say something or the way you go about it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I know that there's seasons of silence. Yeah, no, I think that that season for me was just like him pruning me. Just like really refining things that needed to go. For sure. Yeah. I like that word, refining. Refining. So, so yeah, so that's why I thought it was important to talk about how God has, like, totally saved us and 
because if we don't talk about it i feel like we forget like there were so many things up to that point that he had done for me and i just like did not care about any of those things i needed him right then and there where i feel like those moments of silence and those are moments of refinement those are moments that he's working in us so we could either decide to continue to pursue him or turn away like i did did not work out well for me i was in turmoil for sure instead of finding peace in him well it's funny that you bring up psalms because i haven't spent as much time in psalms as you have Mm -hmm. um but the very first scripture that i kind of memorized as Mm -hmm. a kid Mm -hmm. was when i first came to christ Mm -hmm after an accident Mm -hmm. in a time of turmoil for me like in a time of very self-centered uh background uh was psalm 30 verse 2 which is oh lord my god i cried to you for help and you have saved me Mm -hmm. that was uh the scripture that i held on to in that really rough season where i had just fractured my back i was uh very into uh off-road racing and just kind of like wanting to be this this like professional racer and which is like those goals are fine but it was my everything and i wasn't putting god first and that was the start of my my new walk with the lord with putting trying to put god first um so i definitely see how it's good to remind ourselves of those small miracles of those miracles where god has worked in our lives Mm -hmm. so that was a miracle for me because that was a wake-up call for me to end the way i was living self-seeking um and not thinking of only thinking of myself not thinking of others and the repercussions from such a you know in that time that sport or just that lifestyle Mm -hmm. And seeing a bigger picture mm-hmm. and there's been be- blessings because of it so that was one of the things that came to mind how would you describe your love with the lord has it always been like streamlined have you had like some seasons where you're not seeking the lord like what what has it looked like my personality has a lot to do with my walk with the lord like i've always since before we were married before i met you my wa- I was always a very like go with the flow kind of personality mm-hmm. like we'll figure it out when we get there kind of mm-hmm. thing and uh, I've learned that growing in maturity and walking with the Lord my walk has started in that way kind of like oh I'll plug I'll plug God in here and I'll and then I'll go back and do a little bit of myself here and plug him in plug and play and it just doesn't work out that way so mm-hmm. I'm, I'm maturing with the Lord my walk has been uh the more i learn the more i am accountable for the more god expects of me Mm -hmm. so i feel like my walk with the lord in the beginning was he was like excited for me to be excited about Mm -hmm. jesus god you know the Mm -hmm. holy spirit but since then he has made me uh, dive deeper or feel the holy spirit convict me when i'm not doing the most that I can, mm-hmm. especially now as a father, as a husband, uh, as, you know, in my in my career. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think definitely it's kicked it up. Mm-hmm. And now I'm living in a way where I think um, he's first mm-hmm. and the rest is second. That's cool. What well, was like that turning point? Like what, do you remember like a mm-hmm. certain time that I was just like, all right, it kind of clicked yeah. and you're just like, full force kind of thing yeah i remember a couple of years ago i was coming back to our apartment mm-hmm. on, uh, down in chula mm-hmm. and i was backing my truck into our garage mm-hmm. and i was listening to this worship song mm-hmm. and i was by myself and as soon as i closed the garage mm-hmm. behind when i parked mm-hmm. i felt just like a overwhelming presence of the holy spirit like mm-hmm. just shower me mm-hmm. and i felt god tell me that you're your time here on earth is is near like you're 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 you need to make a decision Mm -hmm. are you going to serve me or are you going to continue to live in the way that and so for me that was like a giant wake-up call because 
there's no time is is very different in in the god's perspective right like mm. a thousand years could be like taking a nap for god or like the perception of time is different right mm. so i didn't taking know <laughs> i you don't know, think like, god takes naps <laughs> like i don't know if he was talking about hey you're you know you're gonna die within a year or you're gonna die within 20 years like yeah. what is your time is near yeah you know like in scripture it says the time is near when jesus will return mm -hmm. like we are living in the end days so that and was that's been two thousand years. that's been two thousand years yeah, since because in scripture it says that we, we have been in the end of time since jesus ascended into heaven mm -hmm. so that just hit me like a ton of bricks and and convicted me but also gave me um motivated me to want to be a man of god mm -hmm. and work for the lord mm -hmm. and Are especially you... as a father because the biggest the biggest thing i remember the biggest thought that came to my head was rosalie was only like a year maybe a, almost a year old mm -hmm. and i just started bawling when that when i got that message in the truck i was bawling my eyes out because i said okay god like i i surrender i whatever you need from me i will do it i will i will live for you because I trust in you to take care of my family. Mm -hmm. if, if if you're telling me I'm going to pass away in a week, or if I'm going to go be with you in a week or in 20 years, I want to make sure that I did everything I could to be like in God's will. Mm -hmm. I want every blessing that he has planned for me. I want to receive every single one. Mm -hmm. So that to me was a big turning point and has been a big blessing to my life. And ours, like mm -hmm. it's created ripples, mm -hmm. I, I think. Mm -hmm. But that reminds me of when, remember, I don't know if it was at our house or at work, but you were taking a shower and the water wouldn't get hot and you felt the Holy Spirit say, nobody likes to be warm. So I was at work, this was last year, and uh, I was taking a shower and uh, showers at the firehouse are obviously super, like you got to be kind of fast when you're working. Anyways, I like that shower particularly because it got very very hot you know and so i got in and for whatever reason it just would not get hot it was really like cold kind of like lukewarm and so i was like ah <laughs> like dude come on like let's go it had been running for like two minutes already and it wouldn't go uh. and then all of a sudden it came a thought came over my head and but it was like a it wasn't my thought it was like a like a, mm -hmm. i felt a voice i didn't hear it but i felt this word come over me mm -hmm. and the word was uh nobody likes lukewarm and then the water got hot like right away <laughs> and it was like, like cool. <laughs> yeah like okay like, and it's just so seasoned like i was talking about like i guess my personality like i i was i could get easily distracted if i'm not focusing on god mm -hmm. i get easily distracted with worldly things and then mm -hmm. i might not necessarily look like bad things mm -hmm. they look just like normal things mm -hmm. like for instance i think it, we were in a season of like i was trying to figure out uh a car situation or like our camping like we had a trailer at the time and i was in between like selling it so all these things that just distracted me from focusing on god mm -hmm. and not Putting him first, allowing those things to be at the foot of the cross, and then him help me, helping me through it. I was trying to take it all on my own, mm -hmm. which then created a void in me spending time with the Lord. Mm -hmm. So, when I felt that come over me, it was like another, like, hey, like another kick in the rear, like mm -hmm. God telling me, hey, get your stuff in line. And so, <laughs> it was, it was awesome. And I think it had a lot to do with my podcast. Mm -hmm. I think it had a lot to do with just taking the, the the leap of faith that God had called me to start this podcast and it's called Amongst Us and it's about how the Holy Spirit is working in the lives of my guests. It's been a huge blessing and not only for us but like for our friends and family that have been listening to it. For the Lord, yeah. yeah. I mean it's just it's been an opportunity for people to get their stories out of how God yeah. is working in their lives and like the goal of this video, like you're saying, mm -hmm. uh bringing to light the miracles mm -hmm. you know great or small that we think that they might be mm -hmm. but they're miracles alone you know mm -hmm. like so yeah. well i just think it's like so uh, uh spoiled of us westerners to even think that a miracle is small like oh it's just a small miracle like okay <laughs> i don't know in my head i'm just like a miracle is a miracle 
and there's like the I'm reading a book right now yeah, called Yeah, elaborate on what you mean by westerners. Yeah. Westerners. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, well, people are like what west coast or east coast? No, No, like like western in civilization. the world, yeah. Because we're so spoiled. We're so spoiled. Any little thing is just like, oh, it's a little miracle. Not like a huge miracle. Like, I feel like every miracle is a huge miracle because God's working. You know, like God's working in our lives currently. And it's just like, just a mind shift that I want to be Totally. very conscious Well, I think where about. the the small and large comes from is like in relative to like what we see that's just my opinion so like a, a small miracle like oh that lined up Mm hmm or and versus like you are in a tough position and you land the job that you've been praying for great like massive miracle right but like but at the same time you're right because there's people on this planet that don't have even the opportunity to receive that small miracle Mm -hmm. yeah so it's just like i don't know it's just a mind shift that i want to make because i'm just like okay god's working in my life that's like a huge miracle in itself because i know that any little any little miracle is gonna uh what's it called snowball into something huge and it's just i know i know like the lord working in our lives is just a miracle in itself because the holy spirit is with us You know, I don't know. That's just how I see it. And I want to see it as if not like, oh, it's just a little thing. A little miracle. No, it's like a miracle. Absolutely. Period. Period. Do you want to talk more about the <laughs> miracles? oh, so I'm reading a book called Women Who Risk. Women Who Risk. That's what it's called. It's called Women Who Risk. And it's such a good And we're book, pretty you much guys. both reading it because after Bianca finishes the chapter, she tells me about I it. tell him everything. So <laughs> we're both reading it. yeah, so we are reading this book called Women Who Risk. I 100% recommend this. I have not been able to put it down. Um, it's about just the miracles that the Lord is doing over there in the Middle East. Wow, you guys. Wow, I'm not even going to spoil, spoil it for you guys because I want you guys to read it, but it's so good. There's an audiobook also, so if you don't want to read it, There's an audiobook. I just wanted to read it. Well, the whole book is about how, so in the Middle East, Muslim countries specifically, um, the Lord is just showing up, literally showing up. Um, for example, how can I, like a woman, li oh my gosh, there's just so many that I can say. Jesus is just showing up, you guys, literally showing up. There's been accounts of a hundred, like hundreds of people that are seeing Jesus, like seeing him, you guys. And he's performing miracles in front of all these people. And it's just uh, so cool to be reading these stories. And I'm a little bit jealous that they get to experience Jesus in that way. But I mean, they have to go through so much. So I'm just blessed to be able to read these experiences. But you were going to talk about also that they they would die for the faith. Oh, Remember? yeah, So they're, that... like, dying for the faith. They are expecting to die for Jesus and, expect, And expecting miracles. and expecting miracles. Yeah, so that was one of the lines that they, they that she said. She said, um, well, because Jesus made so many miracles in the Bible, and that's all they know, right? They're not hindered by... Anywho, so what I was going to say is that they're reading the Bible, and they're not hindered by people who are kind of... jaded you know like oh miracles aren't for now or things like that that you hear like oh spiritual gifts aren't for now it was for back then they're not they're Bold faith. yeah they have bold faith because that's all they know they're they're reading the bible and that's all they know like no one is telling them anything different other than the bible right so they believe what they're reading and jesus is going there you guys and performing miracles and his spirit is there his spirit is alive these families are willing to die for jesus and one of the lines of one of the stories was we know that we're we might die for jesus because you know in, in the muslim countries are just very strict and very against christianity um but then she says in the western world you guys probably don't have to die for jesus but will you live for him and it's just like 
a lot of people aren't even willing to do that but yeah. these people are willing to die for jesus and to die for their faith and it's just wow very humbling okay we've got to get our son hang on. Oh. i think all right y'all we have a little special <laughs> guest here welcome to the show yeah Hope well tell him welcome to the show <laughs> the little boy's teething so <laughs> <laughs> so he uh, needs some extra attention. Needs some extra love. So uh, one thing that I have to say that came to mind on the mm, Western get this culture versus mm -hmm. uh, what's going on in the Middle East, mm -hmm. they're willing to die for their faith mm -hmm. in Jesus because, and we're not because we don't have to. Mm -hmm. We don't. We in the western culture we have it so easy mm -hmm. we have so many distractions mm -hmm. compared to over there mm -hmm. like um there's there's so many things you can do for instance here in the united states like freedom of speech freedom of religion freedom of you can go join an underwater basket weaving team like you can go do <laughs> go do anything uh. you know if if obviously if you have your ducks in a line and you could afford it obviously but basically the word of god gets watered down so many distractions that if we are not uh, intentional about our walk with the lord then we will never make time whereas uh i heard this other podcast where they're talking about resiliency and like how is the united states the highest with diagnosing people with ptsd mm -hmm. because people in the United States, in comparison to other third world countries, are not as resilient. resilient because they're not having to be going through extreme trials as much as in other countries. Mm -hmm. There's no there's no post traumatic stress disorders in in a lot of the third world countries. Obviously, I'm saying that totally separate from like somebody who's in combat or or someone that has gone through an extreme extreme sit mental situation. Mm -hmm. I'm not discrediting that, but this is different. This is talking about like, it's oh, I, ha I have PTSD because, uh, I don't know, I I can't even come up with an analogy, an, an example, but I guess, do you understand my point? Yeah. Okay. So, with, in, in a third world country where there is not that many avenues, there's not many, there's not that many outlets to be able to, to Search. So if they focus on Christ and put Christ first like they do, then they accomplish so much more. Or they, they are much bolder in that sense because they go all out to that one thing. Mm -hmm. And God moves incredibly in, in that mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I was thinking of. Yeah, I do think like we're so distracted. Like everything just being able to have at the tips of our fingertips like Amazon or social media or... What have you? I think there was a study done that the average teenager spends eight out, eight hours on their phone a day. Like that's, that's insane. Sad. That's insane. Like that's so much time. There's twenty four hours in a day. On average, an adult sleeps what eight hours? Mm -hmm. They should. At least. They should. <laughs> a kid more, maybe ten. Yeah. So that means that they're on their phone for more than half of their day. Yeah. That's insane. That's sad, dude. And then, you know, like, they go to school, too, and mm -hmm. then they're on iPads at school mm -hmm. or something. You know? Yeah. Like, I agree with you. I think we're, like, me, totally. Like, I have to give make myself get off social media constantly because I can stay on there for too long, watching YouTube videos and what have you, and not pursuing the Lord. And that's something that I've learned recently is that we have to be the ones yeah. to pursue God. Not because yeah. He won't pursue us, because we see Him pursue people you know in our lives um but it's so important for us to be the one to seek him because if we're not pursuing him it's so easy we get easily distracted we can easily drift away um what did one of our friends that are at the meeting said was that we can't drift towards god we can drift we can only drift away from god mm -hmm. by being you know by being stagnant yes yes Maybe drift exactly away, yeah. we can't drift towards God. We can only drift away from God. And one thing that I'm super grateful that the Lord has worked in our lives is our marriage. I know, like, our marriage isn't perfect. <laughs> She's working on herself. 
tremendously. It's going a long way. <laughs> no, but we have, the Lord has like blessed us so much. There was a time back in the day where I just didn't even think we were going to make it past a year. <laughs> But the Lord has like totally worked in us and through us and I think just being married just sanctifies both of us because you don't learn to serve somebody until you have to serve somebody. Our walk with the Lord is not promised to be all butterflies and rainbows. This walk, this marriage, this is it intentional work that you cannot throw under the rug you have to face it head on and it's hard it's hard but with christ all things are possible so you know being learning about like identifying spiritual attacks or identifying uh identifying ourselves or identifying our self our carnal spirit uh becoming more important than our partner mm -hmm. surrendering that to the lord mm -hmm. will redeem he can redeem any of those oops, those hurdles mm -hmm. if you think you've got a bad i guarantee that there's somebody else that has it worse than you mm -hmm. so um, anything is redeemable through christ uh, one of the biggest things that i remember is we went to a marriage retreat last year and uh, there was hundreds of people there and there was people that were all walks of life in their marriage. There's people that just got married that weekend. There's people that have been married for 50 plus years. Mm -hmm. And then there was people that were on the brink of a divorce. Mm -hmm. Like literally, this is our last chance. This is our last attempt to mm -hmm. saving our marriage, mm -hmm. you know? So uh, with God, all things are possible. Mm -hmm. Keep Christ in the middle of your marriage. I don't expect Bianca to replace uh, God and vice versa. She doesn't like that. God is in the middle of our marriage, which is super important because I cannot gain my my fullness from her. My fullness has to come from Christ so that I could be the best husband possible mm -hmm. for her, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. If I have an issue, uh, one the biggest things I've learned as a husband is like if I know I'm not getting through to her and I'm not making sense, mm -hmm. I need to surrender that and put it at the foot of the cross and let God redeem that mm -hmm. for our marriage. Mm -hmm. And I've done that and it works. It does It does work. God hears us and mm -hmm. um, not everything has to be solved on our own accord. Mm -hmm. And it's easier said than done, but take a step of a uh, leap of faith into the unknown mm -hmm. and God will meet you there. So hard to mess the this year. I'm like in mommy mode now. Um, but to circle back to what Choco was saying was that um, yeah, the Lord just like really worked miracles in our lives, in our marriage specifically. Like, I think just God has just been so gracious to us and just teaching us how to serve each other and a huge turning point for me was just learning how to lean on the lord first before i leaned on him and that sounds like super weird but when i was just like coming to choco with every little thing he obviously got overwhelmed like so much because he's like i can't fix everything like there's only so much i can do and <laughs> He was at work a lot of the time. So when I try, when I learned to like turn to the Lord first and rely on Him first, I feel like that just lifted a lot of pressure from from our relationship. <laughs> okay, so I yes, I definitely think that it is a miracle uh, that I changed the grace of God that He has just worked in you <laughs> to make you so much better. <laughs> than you could have ever <laughs> been on your own <laughs> but <laughs> the miracles to sum up what you were saying pay attention to the reminding yourself of the miracles mm -hmm. that god has done in your life in the lives of those around you mm -hmm. uh and it allows you to feel your your drive for the Lord in the future. God did this 
so then he will do this. God did this so that so then he has given us a spirit capable of be, of doing these things. Mm -hmm. He gives us authority over these things. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not uh, I mean that in in like a, a spiritual like gives us authority to to command things in Jesus name, you know, mm -hmm. it says in scripture. Yeah. So yeah, and be expectant of miracles. That's another thing that I really admired from these women um, in the Middle East is that they're, they're expectant of miracles. They're expecting the Lord to show up. And I feel if we walk boldly in our faith in that manner, He is going to show up because He wants us to expect Him to show up. I think like He craves that from us, to crave Him in that way. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and, you know, I think it, it comes with having the right mindset mm -hmm. on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that happened to me recently, I was at Harbor Freight Tools because I can't afford the ones at Home Depot. So <laughs> I went to Harbor Freight to get, just find some things that I needed for the house. And I was walking through an aisle and this man passed me and I just felt the Holy Spirit tell me to pray for him. Mm -hmm. I didn't know why. So, you know, it's like, dude, it's super bold, mm -hmm. you know, like, don't know why and I don't have time to ask but mm -hmm. I've missed these opportunities in the past where I'm scared and I don't want to step out and I don't want to look be embarrassed mm -hmm. but I, in this particular time I felt confident and I felt like okay I'm gonna do this you know so I went up to this gentleman and um, you know I asked him his name I was like hey um, this might sound a little crazy but I felt when you passed me earlier I felt like the Lord wanted me to pray for you and uh, I think at that time, I think I'd heard something like tell tell him that I love him very much or that I, something like that. Mm -hmm. And that dude started breaking down with me because he he was like, you don't even, you have no clue what I've been through recently. Like I, I'm going through a really hard time. I had a gun put to my head the other day telling me that if, you know, if I don't do something that I'm gonna have my entire life killed. And this just started breaking down with me. And I'm and I'm like, yeah, man. I don't know what to tell you, brother, other than that God loves you, and you need to draw near to Him right now. And so then I, you know, I prayed for Him. I prayed with Him, and I didn't pray with Him like in in a like self lifting way, like or or like, good luck, bud. And I'm gonna pray. No, this was like, hey, brother, I'm with you. Thank you, Lord, for for this man right here. Thank you for allowing me to to be with him today mm -hmm. and share this brotherhood with him mm -hmm. and and just praying you know god's love over him mm -hmm. and he was very receptive and it was and i was i was blessed because of it because i saw god showing his love for that man through me mm -hmm. the holy spirit working through me to to reach this guy mm -hmm. and you know how many other opportunities do we miss because we're not paying attention mm -hmm. So we're distracted. So going back to like what I was saying earlier, if we're just consuming all these things around us, we make no time for God, then God's not going to work in our lives. And and uh, that was that was a cool thing that happened to me recently. And I hope He's doing good. You know, yeah. pray for your friends, man. Pray for your family. Pray yeah. for your enemies. Thanks for joining me today, my love. Welcome to my Bianca Cosita podcast. <laughs> I hope this conversation was a blessing to y'all. Uh, I don't know if it was just all over the place or if it was concise. What do you think? Oops. Concise. But yeah. you know me. I do. But it was... Al El Rambler Ramirez. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's okay. I like to listen to you talk. But... <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining us in today's conversation here with my lovely husband in Bianca's casita. In our casita. casita in Rinconcito Bianca's. Cielo. Yeah. Established 2022. Yeah. And Hi, papito. I'll see you guys next time. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time. I'll see you saying to like the video if you enjoyed his... Uh, what is it called? His little scene. What was it? The, the extra. But He's yeah. the extra. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you, extra. See you guys next time. Right. Bye.